JProfiler is not only a great JFR snapshot viewer, it's also a versatile JFR recording controller. First of all, why would you start a JFR recording when you could start a regular profiling session instead? On the one hand, you could simply be interested in information that is only available from JFR events, such as network utilization data or a list of loaded native libraries. More likely, you may not want to load a native profiling agent in a production machine and turn on the JVMTI, which is the native interface for JVM agents. It could even be that the JVM of interest has disallowed the dynamic loading of agents, in which case JFR is the only option to get some kind of information about runtime characteristics. When it comes to profiling production systems, JProfiler has a lot of built-in functionality to connect to remote machines and containers like Docker. Containers that would be particularly difficult to profile without JProfiler are those managed by Kubernetes. In the same way that you can start profiling on local or remote machines, you can also start JFR recordings. Here I'm on the Quick Attach tab of the Start Center, and I've already selected the Honor Kubernetes cluster option. In our case, the kubectl executable that allows us to connect to the cluster is located on a remote machine. JProfiler connects to that machine with an SSH tunnel that you can configure directly in JProfiler. Let's ask the cluster for a list of pods. Here there is only one pod with one container. Next we select the container and list the running JVMs. The first row is the JVM that we are interested in, which is simply an instance of JShell. When we select it, the three action buttons at the bottom become enabled. The Start button would start a regular profiling session, while the Heap Dump Only button takes an HProf snapshot and opens it in JProfiler. HProf snapshots also do not require the loading of a native profiling agent and are created by the JVM itself. In this respect, they are similar to JFR recording and are a viable option if you want to solve memory problems without switching on the JVM TI. Finally, the Start JFR button lets us start a JFR recording. For JFR recordings, you can selectively enable event types, and many event types have configuration options, such as a threshold or whether to record stack traces. If you have already connected to a particular JVM, you can simply use the last settings again. This is what we're seeing here. The other options in the drop-down come from JVM-specific JFR config files that JProfiler has transferred from the remote machine. From these files, JProfiler determines the available JFR events and builds a high-level configuration UI. These options typically control multiple event types, such as the class loading option at the bottom. In the next step of the wizard, you can see the actual tree of event types and configure options for each event. The class load event that was selected by the high level option in the previous step has two configuration options, whether to record a stack trace and a minimum threshold for class loading durations. After adjusting the recorded event types, we then start recording. A JVM where JProfile or JFR recording is performed has a special background color. We can see that if we select another JVM. Recording will go on until we select the JVM again and click on the Stop JFR button. We don't have to remain in this dialog to wait for the recording. The recording state is attached to the JVM and you could connect with JProfiler from another machine to stop it. The JFR snapshot will be downloaded to the local machine and displayed in JProfiler. It is in a temporary location and will be deleted when the window is closed. To keep the snapshot, use the Save Snapshot button in the toolbar. We can now use the Event Browser or any of the other views to analyze the snapshot. There's a separate screencast that provides an overview of the available features. What if the JVM terminates before we can stop the JVR recording? Let's try this out with a local session. We profile the animated Bezier demo session that comes with JProfiler. If we go to the Quick Attach tab of the Start Center and show the local JVMs, we can see the profiled JVM in red. 
We can start a JFR recording in addition to profiling. Both recordings are independent. Now we just use the last settings for this JVM. If we select another JVM, we can now see that the demo JVM has both the JProfiler GUI connected and the JFR running state. Let's terminate the profile JVM. We do that simply by closing its window. The profiling connection is terminated and JProfiler notifies us about that. But what about the JFR recording? In the list of JVMs, we can see a terminated JFR entry. This entry will remain available until you open it, even if you restart JProfiler in the meantime. The same thing works for any kind of remote connection. Remember to always go back to the dialog where you started the recording. Let's open the snapshot. Here we see what the JVM managed to save before it was terminated. Another interesting situation is when other JVFR recordings are already running. How are those managed by JProfiler? Let's try out what happens in that case. We start the same animated Bezier demo with a JVM parameter that starts a JFR recording. Now let's check if JProfiler shows it in the JFR recording state. The answer is no. JProfiler cannot take control of the recording lifecycle in that case and will not display the JVM in the JFR is running state. We can still start a recording though. Now JProfiler presents two options. Either we can start a managed JFR recording or we can download a snapshot of an existing recording. Contrary to the managed JFR recording, the existing recording will not be stopped. Let's continue with the existing recording. Now we open a new window, otherwise the window with a profiling session would be closed and the demo application would be terminated. Again, we get a temporary snapshot to work with. As you can see, JProfiler is a full solution for working with JFR and provides unique features for JFR recordings, such as managing recordings on remote machines and containers.